Hey guys, it's Ken from Roof Site Visit, and I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how to draw using the brand new uh, software that we have. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, click on Roof Area, and we're going to take our cursor, and you basically I'm using my uh, right index finger. If you're left-handed, you might want to use a different finger, but I'm using my right index finger, and I'm placing the cursor um, right where I want to uh, start my drawing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my other hand and I'm going to tap the screen. And then once I do that, I'm going to leave my right index finger on the screen and drag it to the next point. And then I'm going to tap the screen again. And I'm going to go to the next point and continue doing that. Tap the screen. Now, the way that this software works is that you have to draw each shape one shape at a time. You cannot go around the perimeter and then fill in the blanks later. You must draw everything one shape at a time. And you can see that it turns white once you're finished. And you have to trace back over the lines that you've already finished, okay? Um, this was the uh, preferred method for us for um, designing our software. We, we tried it um, where all you had to do was connect the lines, but we found that the, the software was getting too confused and well, we found that by doing this it does take a little bit longer to do things but um, we find that the accuracy and the the um, lack of errors uh, makes it well worthwhile as you can see I'm going through this fairly quickly here I chose this particular drawing for a reason um, it's because it has a little bit of overhangs and a little, so it's a little bit of an advanced drawing in some sets um, so what I'm gonna do is run this through real fast and I'll save some of the parts in the, on the lower roofs and stuff uh, towards the end here so I can show you the correct way to tackle those areas. As you can see as I'm going around, um, right now the uh, app is showing, every side is showing uh, 0, 012. Okay, so I finished the upper uh, part of the roof here and I'm going to start drawing the lower roof. Now, it definitely helps here uh, when you know what the shape of the roof is supposed to look like. I've been an estimator of myself for quite a while and I, I know exactly what this roof is supposed to be looking like. And so, um, it, like I said, it helps because if you can't figure out exactly what um, this is, what the uh, um, shape is supposed to be doing, then uh, um, it's very difficult for you. But uh, you, you notice there in this valley area right over here, that I just traced along t that line there. I'm just going to zoom down there for a second. And what I want to make sure is I want to make sure that that line is exactly on top of the other line. And as long as it is, then that will only count uh, as one line when it's being calculated. And as you can see, I drew a bit of an overhang area there. And I'm going to click on roof area again. I'm going to continue my drawing. So I'm going to start there. Sometimes I, I tap my hand a little bit too fast and then I uh, start moving before the actual app is set. So I'm just going to continue drawing. I've got another one of these areas now where I have to do an overhang. So I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to go in about like that. I'll show you something in a little while here um, about doing the overhangs and getting it to be exactly um, let's say you have a two foot overhang or, or an 18, 18 inch overhang then there is a way I'm just gonna zoom here and move over to the side here and I'm gonna click on roof area again but there is a way to actually draw um, exactly two feet I'll show you that in a little while now you notice that I'm not being too careful about my lines and there's a reason for that um, I'm just trying to get run through this very quickly but also, there's a way, and I, I just messed up there actually, and I, I didn't stop. And you see how there's two lines here? I'll get to this in a moment, but let me just finish doing my actual drawing here. And I'm just going to finish off. This is my last shape on this roof area here, and I'm just going to do the overhang. And you see, the cursor really helps you too because it helps you line up your lines so it looks pretty reasonable. Now, I finished my drawing. Um, just doing the outline sketch, but there's a few lines here that I'm not very happy with, so I'm going to
click on modify actually I'm going to zoom down here first and I'm going to click on modify I'm going to go move point okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this point right here and I'm going to just tap my screen and you see I can move this line like this and raise my finger and it uh, moves that line for you. So right here I'm not very happy with this so I'm going to tap it I lift my finger off the screen and it'll go to that place. And You can really go around and do this to all parts of your drawing. You can, if, you, if, if your overhangs don't look too nice you can just make some adjustments. Oh, that wasn't right. And you can just make some little adjustments to make things look a little bit nicer. And typically what I'll do is I'll just kind of quickly scan around my drawing. And I'm not happy with this. Just so I can move that there a little bit. Zoom around. Modify. You get the idea. But the great thing about that, I don't think there's any other software um, besides ours that actually has this kind of a function. And I, I don't even know that uh, some of the major um, desktop software has that kind of functionality. So I think this is a real treat um, for everybody. Now, there's, you know, I'm pretty happy with that, how that all came out now. One last little spot here. And I'm going to do that. Now, get back to where I was telling you that all those um, spots are, are 0, 012. That's because right now the drawing thinks it's a flat drawing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add slope to this, and I'm going to add this particular roof I know was a 612, and I'm going to say apply to all, and everything turns into a 612. There's no measurements on the roof yet because we haven't set any scales or anything like that. Um, that witch's hat or conical at the back of the, the very top of the drawing here, is um, those are usually a little bit steeper, so I'm going to make that an 812. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go select area, and then I'm just going to tap all these areas here and you see all those areas there's one 612 there but that acts that 612 is actually for the, the the large side but all the the areas on the the conical there are now an 812 what we're going to do now is we're going to set our scale and we, we could have set our scale first it doesn't really matter you can set your scale after you draw one one triangle or any or at any time actually the beautiful thing about our scale version now is that I don't need to um, go off of a line on here on the on the drawing. If I if, if I happen to know a measurement from the ground, like if I happen to know what that measurement to right there is, and let's just say that's 75 foot point three point three means three inches means three inches, and if I go set, you see that line turns yellow for a moment. And it, it, it sets the, the scale of the drawing to 75 foot 3 inches. Now, when I go and I click on Identify, I'm going to identify each one of these lines. And as I identify them, the length of those lines is all going to appear. And the reason that we wait until um, you're identifying them to show the measurements is because when you have a sloped roof um, and you have a hip, let's say, then we want the the actual measurement of that hip to show up on the on the drawing, not the um, the the straight up and down the the horizontal measurement. So you can see it's very fast to do this. And one great thing that we added in the app as well is is the feature that you can you, you can be in identify mode and you can zoom as well. So what I'm going to show you is this. So let's say I have these two valleys here. I can go identify valleys and I can touch these two valleys. Then I can zoom and I can go find any more valleys that I have. And all I got to do is touch the screen. I don't have to do anything else. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to touch the screen, zoom, see if there's any more valleys. Nope, that's it. And oh, there's one more right there. And you see when I touch that line, the entire length of that valley turned because that other, the uh, overhang line was sitting directly on top. We're almost done here. I'm going to go ridges, just select these real quick. And I missed a hip earlier, so I'm going to go and touch this hip here. I'm going to get some rake edges. Now, if you need to zoom down 
to catch a line, it's no problem. You can zoom quite far in. Now, we've got some wall flashing and we've got some step flashing here. So, identify some wall. And I, I call this little piece, see, I made a mistake there. I'm just going to call this a step. I call that little piece just to the left there uh, a piece of wall, but it's actually just some soffit. And uh, uh, you can kind of do whatever you want with it. I just don't like to have uh, areas without uh, being identified. So I'm just going to finish up my last few spots here. Uh, I've got some wall right there, and I've got some step flashing. We're getting close to the end of our drawing. Oop. Now again, I could have zoomed down, and I should have zoomed down to touch that. And now I'm going to just go identify hips. Okay, so now that the drawing's done, uh, everything's labeled, I want to check it now and see how many squares I have. Um, I'm going to go here, I'm going to click on Report down at the bottom right hand side here. And you can see if I click on the report, it shows you um, my eaves, my hips, my valleys, um, all the lengths, the, how much 612 area I have, how much 812 area I have, the roof total, and I added a 15% waste factor. Waste factor is found when you click on Settings down near the bottom and if I wanted to change that to 0% just to know what I had without any waste and I go report then you can see it's 0% and all those numbers um, decrease to uh, accommodate that. Um, one of the great things about the app is that we uh, in this version is that we've made it so that the user can define um, you know their own preferences here. So one of the things that we have is for when you're finished your drawing, you may want to change the width of the lines so that when you print your report that it, they, these lines stand out even more. I like to have mine right around here somewhere. That way when I print my report, they all stand out very nicely on the, on the page. Um, another setting that we have is color. So let's just say that I wanted to change um, all those uh, areas in the back uh, in that little uh, conical there, purple. I'm just going to go select area and I'm going to touch all those areas with my hand and um, they all turn purple. That way just to show that I have a different pitch. And then that brings me to fill. Fill is, is the how much transparency each color has. And the more you turn this up, the more they go. And you see there's the purple and there's the white. And I like to have mine for for, for reporting purposes, I like to have mine um, set all the way to off, but sometimes you might want to have a little bit more highlight in there just to show those 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 colors. Um, text size is another one. Um, sometimes you can have your text really big and sometimes you can have it really small. You're just going to have to adjust it when you finish your drawing. That way um, it looks better on the screen for you when you have it that way. Um, snap range. What the snap range is, if you're in roof area mode, and you can see my cursor as I get close to this corner here, all of a sudden it's just going to pop over there onto that thing, and it's a very small snap range. I can get really close to that line without having it snap. I can turn it uh, down so that it doesn't even snap at all. See, uh, just I'm right on top of it now before it'll snap. Um, I can actually toggle and I can turn snap off right there. But in this particular case, I can also um, set it so that when the my finger is very far, when the cursor is very far away, it'll snap. Watch this, it'll jump any time now. There you go. So it's quite a distance, about a quarter inch on the screen that, it, that it'll be before it's away. I like to have mine set somewhere around there. I just find that I get a good feel for the drawing when I'm doing it about that distance. Um, Scale, we already know, um, that's where you can set your scale of your, your drawing. Uh, waste factor, we already know, and cursor offset. Cursor off offset, you won't be able to see it, but um, because of you, you can't see my finger on the screen, but basically the cursor is sitting above your finger. And the, if you want to have your cursor offset, like, this is where I leave, leave mine, and I, I quite like it there. Uh, some people might like to have it more in the middle. But if you have it at the end, basically that cursor is going to be about an inch or so away from your finger. Right now it's about three-eighths of an inch from my finger, just looking at that uh, where the dot is right there. 
One thing I forgot to show you um, in the modify section. Um, actually, there's a whole slew of things in the modify section here, so I might as well go through them. I've already showed you uh, move point, but we've also got move area or opening. So if I want to select an area, I can literally take any one of these areas, and I'll take this little triangle here, and I'll tap the screen, and I'm just going to drag this thing away from here. Look, and I took that area, and I moved it right out of the way. Then I can take that area, and I can snap it, and snap it there, and snap it there, and put it right back where it came from. This might be handy if you wanted to, let's say you get to the job site and there's a small low roof that you can't really see over the door or something, and you just want to draw it away from the, the roof and then you can just drag it into place later on after you've labeled it. If I had uh, a, a low roof in this area here, underneath here, it would be hard for me to draw that and, then with that and label it without having this. So I might want to draw it up here. Another thing is once you've set the scale and you go to draw area, let me show you this, you can also see the cursor tells you how f far that line is as you're drawing it. So if I had a low roof that was about 10 feet, and I'll just go to 10 feet, uh, 10 feet by 2 feet, you just drag it down here and go 2 feet, come on. If I zoom down, this will be a lot easier. And then again to 10 feet. And I'll just finish that just to show you. And again, if I wanted to mo modify and move that area, I could take that and I could dr drag it over here and I could put it in there if I wanted to. I could also delete that area. Oops, that was delete point. That was, I'm going to delete this area. And so I'm going to tap the screen. Once I get it there, it'll say, do you want to? I'm going to say, yep. And we're going to get rid of it. I can also delete points. And I'm not going to because it'll make a mess of the drawing here. but. If I wanted to, I could take this point right here and I could delete it. And it would just, it would, five different things would, would happen there. But but uh, if you have one particular shape and you found later on that it wasn't really the way you wanted your drawing, you could delete a point. Um, the other thing I have is delete area or opening. Well, you haven't added an opening yet, so you wouldn't be able to delete one. But let me just show you how add an opening works. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click add an opening. Actually, I'm going to zoom down here first. To here and then I'm going to go modify and I'm going to go add an opening. This skylight here is an opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here and I'm going to just try and draw this. I think the skylights actually I'll just draw it to there and to there and to there and to there and you'll see what happens here and let me just actually give you some fill so that I can show you this. That actually cut a hole in that where that skylight is. You see? That's an opening. And where those come in handy is when you're doing dormers. Let's say that there, there is a dormer on the roof right, right there. Um, I could draw another roof area right over top of that hole now because that hole's been cut out for the dormer for the three walls. Um, I'll show that in another tutorial because this one's getting a bit long. But basically you use your roof opening to draw underneath the dorm where the walls are and the valley sides and then you can just simply draw a roof right over top of it again and everything works out. The opening deletes the area based on whatever slope this particular side is. I'm just going to toggle and I'm going to go um, area or pitch. So right now you can see that this is a uh, 612 roof and that hole that I made there is a 612 hole. Now, sometimes dorms are, are a different pitch altogether, so it's no problem. You just go ahead and draw over top of this roof opening, and you can call it whatever pitch you want. So that's how you would be able to do it if it was a dorm. Actually, we're here, so I'm going to do a dorm for you. So I'm going to go modify, I'm going to go add an opening, and I'm going to draw a dorm. I'm going to pretend that there's a dorm on the roof right here. And a dorm would typically look, the, the walls that you would want to draw would look something like this and it would look something like that. That would be the opening. Then you would go roof area and you would simply draw from here and again you want to stay right on top of those that line there and you draw like this. It takes no time. There's one side and And then there's another side, and there's your dorm. And then now I can actually slope it, 
And if I wanted to, I could say that those are 12-12. And I could just go select area, go touch, touch. And those are now 12-12. The hole underneath it is 6-12 because that's what the side is. But the dorm is now 12-12. So that's how you do a dorm. And it didn't take me long. So there you go. Um, what else do we have here? Um, oh, in uh, de if you click on details when you're in the label thing, you'll see all these letters from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. The way where you'd use those is if you had some kind of a funny um, flashing detail or something like that. And then if you went to your blank editor part of the application and you drew that detail, well, then you could come back here and label it A, B, C, D, whatever. Um, and, and you'll know the length of that detail there. I'll, I'll go through that in another uh, tutorial as well. Um, so obviously if you create an opening, then you can delete an area or opening. And let's say I want to get rid of this skylight that I just did here. I just simply highlight it so it goes red. Say, do you want to delete it? And say, yes, I do. And there it goes. Now, I'm going to save this and I'm going to sync it to the server because I like my drawing. This is exactly how I want it. Actually, I'm going to turn off my fill because I want to generate a report. So I'm going to click on save. And what it does is it synchronizes this back to our server so that way it's saved for you. And um, then we can go and click on generate report. And we're going to click on main image. And we're going to say done and generate and it asks you do you want the background image in the roof or not do you want the photo of the roof or do you just want the drawing I'm going to say no just to show you that we just want the drawing here right now I'm going to click on that and voila there you go there's the company logo that I'm using it's just a test account and um, there's the the drawing for you here and uh, there it is now those obviously those yellow um, um, measurements around the side aren't very visible from this but if you were to print this on a, a black and white page uh, they would stand out a bit more and actually if you were to print it on a on a regular sheet they would stand out quite a bit more as well so but there it is um, you can go back and if you want you can sync this to the server as well and this is synchronize your report and say yes and it sends that back up to the server and someone in your office can go and log in to your admin panel if they want to and they can do that uh, anytime they like. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks very much. And if you have any questions, please email me at ken at roofsitevisit.com. Thanks very much.